Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. This is Fair Value Finder and taking a look at Vici Properties Inc, ticker VICI. This is one that I'm excited about. It's another real estate investment trust. I don't currently own it, but I've heard a bit about it. And what I've seen so far is kind of exciting. So without further ado, let's get into it. It hasn't been around for very long. It looks like it went public in 2018. And it's kind of been going up since uh, like everything we saw dip down in 2020 and it has recovered nicely back up above uh, where it had dipped from that 2020 dip. We're on a nice little uptrend. Uh, we're basically riding it right now on another leg up. And uh, we have from the peak, uh, we have a top of our uptrend and we're kind of just trading within that channel, just a nice diagonal. Uh, it looks like $25 seems to be a bit of a support that it caught uh, in 2021, stayed there for a little bit, and now it's popped up. Seems to really have some resistance at 35, can't seem to break above. We have three touches, but it looks like it could ride this uh, uptrend up above, hopefully, uh, especially after these earnings. So let's get into the financials and take a look at what those are showing us. We have the financials for the company. We see incredible total revenue growth as with uh, realty income, this one's even higher at nearly 43% year over year, 72% this last year alone. Very impressive stuff. Uh, the cost of goods or the, just their real estate expenses have been growing up. Of course, uh, the larger the portfolio, the more. Uh, this one is a red flag because it is growing faster than the top line revenue year over year. But this last year, it did come in lower than the revenue growth. The gross profit, we see growth on par with top line growth of 42.2%. Coming in just half a percent lower, uh, the last year was right on par. Net income, we see nearly half of the gross profit growth. And then we come to expenses. They've been growing 9.25%. That's okay. Uh, this last year was huge and the earnings, they'll talk a little bit about that. This was a big year for investments for them. So that's why it's orange. It's kind of an outlier. I don't think it's a huge deal. And in fact, in the real estate space, that might actually be a good thing. EBIT, we see 27.8% year over year growth. It was a little bit lower this last year, but as to be expected with those higher expenses, uh, the gross profit, mostly flat. Uh, right around 96%, which is what we love to see. Uh, they have a very nice return on their investments. Net profit has been falling with those expenses climbing. And uh, we do see it down to 42.3% this last year. But again, last year was an outlier with those expenses. So we'd expect it to jump back up to the 60s this year, as long as they're not making any large acquisitions again. Uh, earnings per share. Growing very slowly, uh, half a percent year over year. Uh, this last year, it did dip down, again, with expenses. Uh, so it looks like right now they're trading around a 25 PE, which is interesting considering that realty income was trading at 40. Uh, this stock looks like the market likes it around 20. Uh, we saw it trading at 20 in 2019, almost 17 back in 2021. And at the end of last year, it was 25.4. So they're factoring a bit more growth into it now than they were at the end of last year. Uh, for uh, the fair value, based on its historical uh, PEs, we'd be looking at 26.25 with their earnings. And if they're able to come in, as analysts expect, at $2.40 in earnings, uh, we'd be looking at 50. But they issue a lot of stock and those earnings will be diluted with that stock. So I don't think we're going to see $2.40. I think we might might hit $2, but $2.40 might be a bit high. Assets, we see great growth. Uh, less last year, uh, nearly doubling them. Liabilities. We see a similar story. In fact, they're growing a little bit faster than the assets are. A slight cause for concern, but uh, the fact that 
their liabilities are less than half of their assets means that they'll probably be okay. Book value, we do see positive book values across the board on this company, growing very fast, uh, as would be expected with the asset growth. And for that, uh, we'd be looking at about $68 a share. And if they're able to continue at this pace, 96. So they're definitely strong on assets here. A little weak on earnings. A free cash flow, they're coming in with some growth, uh, some good growth, especially this last year. And that puts them at a fair value of around $40, 57 if they can continue at this pace. Uh, the share count has been growing very quickly, as I said. And for these real estate investment trusts, they're required to pay out about 90% of their income to shareholders. So if they want to maintain a solid dividend while also raising cash for investments, issuing shares is probably the easiest thing for them to do. And clearly it's working with the insane growth that we see in both of these companies and the high gross profit percentages. So is it a cause for concern? A little bit, but I feel like I understand why they're doing it. Uh, shareholders equity, we do see great growth, uh, nearly 43% year over year. This last year, it didn't grow quite as quickly. I mean, we see it was 9.7 in 2019, and it was 28.7 uh, just this last year. Uh, the dividend, uh, they pay out quarterly, 39 cents a quarter as of the end of last year. So that'd be a dollar and 56 cents per share, which gives them a 4.84% dividend yield. Uh, historically, they've been right about 4.8%, uh, growing that slowly over time. Uh, they are raising their dividend 9.4% year over year, 8.3 this last year. So for that kind of dividend, I'd be willing to pay $32.50, which is exactly where the stock sits today. Well, actually, for that kind of dividend, the market uh, seems to be willing to pay $32.50, which is exactly where they sit today. And if they continue at this pace, we'd be looking at $35.28. And now we get to take a look at these earnings. Uh, this is the exciting part, and this is why you should look into the earnings of companies or watch my videos where we take a look at the important things. So... Total revenues increased 110.7% year over year to $877.6 million. AFO up 73%. Weighted average outstanding shares increased 45.9%. So they're continuing to issue those shares. They acquired four gaming properties in Alberta, Canada. So this company is going international, which is exciting to see. There could be a lot of growth there. They acquired the remaining 49.9% in MGM's Grand Mandalay Bay joint venture. Expanded the existing partnership with Great Wolf Resorts through the origination of a construction loan up to $287.9 million. Purchased $85 million in senior secured notes to fund the redevelopment of Hard, Hard Rock Ottawa Casino. Entered a triple net lease agreement with Cherokee Nation uh, related to the Gold Strike Casino Resort and completed the forward equity offering. Here are their expectations for the year. They plan to get their stock count up to 1,009.5, which it currently sits at... 1,003.8. So they do plan to issue quite a bit more stock, but they do have a, uh, a goal that they're trying to hit. And this is essentially their earnings per share here. So as I was saying, the $2.40 the analysts have, I believe is a little high. They're saying that they think that they'll come in between 2.10 and 2.13. I said that I think they'll come in closer to 2 
So if we change that to 210, uh, we had seen the share price of nearly $50 looking forward. Uh, that brings it down to 43. And now we come down to that balance sheet. So we see that the total assets have grown from 37.6 to 41.9. Uh, total liabilities have grown from 15.3 to 18.2. And stockholders' equity has grown from 37.5 to 41.8. Revenues, see, my first look through of this, I see they're growing their golf revenues. From what I had heard, I thought that they were a casino in Vegas company. That was their niche. But it looks like they're expanding outside. They've got Mississippi, they've got casinos across the nation and moving into Canada, the world, but also they have resorts and golf operating expenses are up from 105.5 to 150.6. So that is a rather large leap in their operating expenses. A general administrative is up significantly uh, as are other expenses. And here's where we see what they were talking about earlier with uh, net income growing from 240.4 to 518.7. Some massive, massive growth there. They've more than doubled. And that helps us come down to this bottom line and see that for the first quarter, comparing this year to last year, they have essentially doubled their EBITDA. Contractual revenues. Uh, so this is their revenue breakdown. We see Caesars, they're up from 122.7 to 132.9. A Greek town lease is holding stable. Everything is looking very healthy. Some good growth in all of their leases. I mean, aside from the Greek town. Contractual income from lease financing receivables. We see more this year than they had last year. Uh, last year they had three. This year they have significantly more. And there's that pure that they had, the gold strike that they mentioned above. And this revenue going from 63 to 354.8. Interest income moving from 72.9 to 371.1. Their total revenue is more than doubling, uh, coming in above how they typically perform. So it looks like this year is going to be another year, kind of like last year, where they're going to have very high revenue growth and gross profit growth. <coughs> uh, last year, we saw 72.3 on the top line, gross profit 69.3. Uh, they've started off this year with numbers 50 to 100% higher than the first quarter of last year, which was an incredible year for them. So I like what I'm seeing. Uh, I, I don't know that the market has truly priced in this growth from the earnings. I mean, they acquired the remaining interest in Mandalay Bay, and that, they say, really helped contribute to their revenues. And we saw all of the different streams. They have pricing power with rents expanding globally. They have a target for how many shares they want to have issued at the end of the year. So this growth may actually help grow the stock price. For Vici, uh, I might be buying some. My one issue, <coughs> well, I already said the growing share count is an issue for me, but another issue is the low volumes on their options. Um, all that I am able to see is monthly contracts, almost quarterly contracts, honestly, at uh, very wide strikes, which makes it hard to hedge the investment. Because if I'm buying something, I want to be buying 100 shares and hedging. Hedging my investment so I can make some money on the downside as well as the upside.
and I will create a video about that for anyone who doesn't understand what I'm talking about. But that's all for this one. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see, and I will catch you next time.